بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان لاسٹ ٹائم وی وی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا تھری ڈفرنٹ فارمس آف بزنس آرگنائزیشن ان وچ وی لک ایٹ دی سول پروپرائٹر شپ اینڈ وی لک ایٹ دا پارٹنر شپ اینڈ وی آلسو لک ایٹ دا کارپوریشن اینڈ وی ور سینگ ہاؤ ٹیکسیشن از ڈفرینشیٹیڈ بٹوین دا تھری ناؤ ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ ٹاپک وچ از ڈائیورسٹی ان کارپوریٹ گورننس ناؤ اگین وین وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ڈائیورسٹی دین دیر آر ڈفرنٹ ڈائمینشنز آف ڈائیورسٹی دیر آر ڈفرنٹ segments of diversity, there are different levels of diversity, there are different elements of diversity. And then when we are looking at corporate governance, then corporate governance at a national level and at a global level, they have a totally different context. And then in different regions also, if you look at the Americas, uh, then their corporate governance uh, is different. While if we look at the Commonwealth countries and we look at primarily the UK, then again, the whole context of corporate governance is different. So there is a lot of diversity. There are many new developments also taking place because this is a organic uh, subject. This is a organic framework. So as business tends to change in the 21st century and we see new dimensionalities emerging, then we also see that in this particular context, new frameworks, new interpretations, uh, new contexts are emerging of corporate governance. And as business becomes more technologically advanced and more technologically inclined, more internet focused, and also the fact that there are very less limitations and very less constraints, and there is cross-border business taking place. So again, we see that there is a lot of diversity in corporate governance. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about diversity in corporate governance, then among the more important contextual and industrial variables that influence the business form, and system of corporate governance adopted are national, regional, and cultural differences. So when we're talking about these three, then again we see that, let's say, if we look at Pakistan, then we look at SARC as the region, and then we also look at a global context. So there are different uh, cultural and regional uh, differences involved in it. Ownership structure and dispersion can also differ from country to country and from region to region. The industry at the market environment of the corporation, that also tends to be very diverse. The firm size and structure would differ between the different laws of the land. The life cycle variations, including origin and development, technology and periodic crises and new directions would also change. The chief executive officer tenure, attributes and background can be different. So ladies and gentlemen, what we see over here is, is that diversity can have different contexts, different variables and based upon that we have to understand corporate governance on a national regional and global context now when we are looking at diversity again then we see that there is the outsider system and there is the insider system in the rich diversity of corporate governance forms internationally there is a clear divergence between outsider systems found in anglo-american countries and the insider system which predominates in europe asia pacific the outsider system is oriented very strongly towards shareholders and perceives the majority corporate objective as the delivery of shareholder value, while the insider system is built on close relationships with a wide range of stakeholders and conceives of the corporate mission as the creation of values for all stakeholders in perpetuity. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at the outside system and the inside system, there, there is a great difference. And in the uh, outside system, what we see is, is that shareholder value is the most important variable. While in the inside system, there are multiple sub variables. And we talk about stakeholders. We talk about stakeholder values. We talk about stakeholder integration. We talk about stakeholder harmonization. We talk about stakeholder interests. So all of these things tend to change. And these two models tend to dominate the corporate governance world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about uh, the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, then again, there are different governance elements, democracy and citizenship, representation, constitution, rule of law, which is extremely important because without rule of law, then again, there can be nothing. The uh, competitive party and electoral systems, a permanent civil service, separation of powers, between the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. And now we also include the media and civil society. 
judicial review and then secularity. The formal differences among nations reflect the history of individual nations. They signify that nations are distinguished by cultural forces rooted in their past. So again, ladies and gentlemen, when we are looking at corporate, corporate governance, it cannot be in isolation. We are also looking at the historical context. We are also looking at the social and societal fabric of a nation. We are also looking at the different frameworks and institutions of a particular country. We are looking at the role of different institutions like judiciary, like the parliament, like the media, like the executive and also civil society. We are looking at the rule of law and the different laws which exist, not in isolation, but how they tend to intertwine with each other and tend to create a harmonious and a conducive environment for business entities at different levels. And again, in all of this, we also have to see that what is the socio-cultural values and ethos of a particular nation, because that also has a very strong reflection on corporate governance. And therefore, when we are talking about the diversity of different, um, of different corporate governance uh, systems and mechanisms, then that is uh, a rainbow of different elements. And we have to see that what is the context and what is the background and what is the history to which it would lead to a better future for a national economy, for a regional economy and for a global economy. Thank you so much.